She's a Mona Lisa Everyone's lining up to see her Hey, what's up? I'm Selena, and today I will be talking about Mia Khalifa, and this video will be in parts, and everything will be timestamps below. Before I begin, make sure you subscribe. Also, follow me on all my social media. Everything will be in the bio, my Twitter, my Instagram, my TikTok, all of that. Okay, let's begin. So the story goes, she just got a breast augmentation, and she's working at some burger place. I can't remember the name. And a man approaches her like right after she, like, you know, she just got this augmentation and looks at her and she's like, oh, like, have you ever thought about doing porn? And she thought about it for two weeks and then she said yes. Now Mia says that part of the reason why she did say yes is because she did have very low self-esteem at the moment um, for a long period of time. For most of her teenage years, she was overweight and bullied because of that. So at this point in time, you know, she had lost a lot of the weight a lot if not all of the weight and she had just got her boobs done so she thought that this was um something that can give her a sense of value and validation now not everyone who gets into the porn industry has a negative experience but too many people do because the porn industry likes to prey on emotionally unstable um men and women but women for sure and rope them into these unfair contracts. Like I said, not everyone who gets into porn has a negative experience, but way too many people do. And Mia Khalifa is obviously one of those people who had a very negative experience in the porn industry. Now, I think she did other pornographic content outside of Bang Bros, but I know for sure with Bang Bros, she did 11 videos for a span of three months between the years 2014 and 2015. And this actually made her the Pornhub's most searched for porn star in 2014. Lisa Ann was the number one porn star for the entire year of 2014. And then right at the last second in November, December, Mia Khalifa beat her and just skyrocketed. And Pornhub has this these website this website where they um, put, show all their stats. So I'm getting what I just said from the Pornhub stat page. Um, that will be linked below. And also what I'm about to say next. She was also the number two most searched for porn star in 2019. And she quit porn in 2015. So all these years later, and she's still top five. And actually, I just checked literally five minutes before I started this video. The top porn stars on Pornhub. And she is still, she's number five. So she's still top five after all these years. It's crazy. So obviously she's very popular and Bang Bros and all everywhere else that's, you know, she's worked with is still getting so much money from the videos that she did with them years, years prior. Now, the question a lot of us have is why is she so popular? Like there's so many porn stars there's so many porn stars out there and a lot of them if they just rise quickly they'll also have a very quick decline um they'll just be you know it's, uh just a memory in the back of our head or whatever but she stayed relevant and she's still relevant to this day so why is she still relevant why are people still searching for her even though there's no new content what's the deal well before i can talk about that i do have to talk and say this she was born and raised in lebanon and she moved to the u.s when she was 10. Um, she was raised Christian, but porn doesn't care about that. They see a brown girl and they're just like, oh, we're going to make her Muslim. And that segues into this very, very infamous pornographic film called Coming for Dinner. She was asked to perform at hijab. So she was very skeptical and she actually told the director, you're going to get me fucking killed. But also she was 21 at the time, very low self-esteem. She didn't have a great sense of self. So this resulted in her feeling like she couldn't say no. So she did it. It was produced by Bang Bros and it was the first hijabi porn produced, like professionally produced in America at least. So it's very new. Um, I'm pretty sure maybe like there was some amateur porn that featured people in a hijab. It's really hard to tell, but that was the very first professionally produced one in America. So this is new and not only is it new, but it's controversial. So everyone's just like, whoa, I've never seen this before. Or like, you know, like, whoa, what? So we got a lot of people talking, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people talking. And it was so much people were talking that it actually hit mainstream media, not only in the US, but in Lebanon and surrounding countries. So people are actually 
talking about this, this hitting mainstream media, this hitting the news. They're like, what the fuck? People are pissed. People are people are feeling a lot of things. But like I said, most importantly, people are talking, which is contributing to the popularity of this one film coming for dinner. And there's um, a lot of reasons why people speculate this particular film was so popular. <laughs> Not only is she in a hijab, but she's very clearly a brown person. She has very distinct brown features. Um, and the other performer that they had in the video, um, the other female performer, she's Cuban. So they tried to pass her off as Middle Eastern, which they do a lot in porn. They like, if you're ethnically ambiguous, they try to pass you off for other things to satisfy other fetishes and people should not be fetishized, but that's a different story. Um, but Mia is clearly brown. So that's like another thing that people are like, whoa, like an actual brown girl is in a hijab. And she's doing porn in a hijab. And a lot of her traffic is actually coming from a lot of these Middle Eastern countries. So maybe like one reason is because people are actually trying to seek out um, women who looks look like the, the women they're surrounded by, like, you know, people who look like them. Um, so that's like another reason why. Or on the flip side is because Westerners are fetishizing her. Mostly white men. Um, she's exotic. You don't like, like I said in porn. You don't see this. You don't. You don't see a, a Middle East a clearly like Middle Eastern looking person in porn a lot for lots of different reasons. So Westerners are like, oh my God, she's exotic and ew, fetishizing her, and it plays into this white savior complex. Um, uh, <laughs> it plays into lots of ugly racial stereotypes. It really plays into the uh, conquering of the brown woman trope. Uh, like this brown woman needs to be conquered. Okay, she needs to be saved because her exoticness is so exotic. And the hijab just adds the icing to the cake because not only does she look brown, but she's like the Westerners version of like the stereotypical brown woman. And it just adds to the Muslimness of her, even though, like I said, she's not even Muslim, but porn doesn't care. <laughs> so in this scenario of the conquering the brown woman, the, the brown woman has no real identity outside of this caricature of what a brown woman is. And she's just an other that just needs to be conquered by this white dumb fantasy. And it's really gross. So long story short, um, one reason why people were really clicking on this was to either see someone who looks like themselves or another reason to kind of play into the fetishization of a brown Muslim woman. Muslim, because she's not Muslim. Um, and I'm sure there's other reasons too that hopefully are not that bad. But also this, this gained a lot of traction too because um, like I said, her being brown plays a big, big part of it because there's so much cultural taboo surrounding sexuality um, in regards to the Middle East, which also is a reason why you don't see a lot of Middle Eastern porn stars because of all these cultural taboos. So that's one thing. But even besides her being brown, another reason why this could have gotten so popular is because when she signed the contract with Bang Bros, they gave it this this movie massive promotion. Like this shit was getting promoted everywhere. Well, why is it why are people still watching this? It's 2020. Well, a lot of her scenes get recycled, you know, they get re-uploaded, reshared, and she Mia Khalifa doesn't even do porn anymore. She's a sports commentator and activist. So if you follow her for like sports related things or whatever, and you're like, okay, I wanna know more about Mia because I like Mia Khalifa so much. You're gonna see, you're, you're definitely gonna come across her videos. So then people, new people who didn't even see those videos back in 2014, 2015 are gonna keep watching it and the cycle is just gonna keep continuing and continuing and that video is never gonna fucking die. Now, the reason why I'm talking about coming for dinner in specific is because that video in particular led to a lot of cyberbullying like I said, her doing the scene in a hijab caused major controversy and yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't it. 
And like I like she said, she told her director, you're gonna get me fucking killed if I do this in a hijab. And lo and behold, she was almost right. She's still alive, thank God. But she did receive lots and lots of death threats. And she received open threats from ISIS themselves. And it was, it's scary. I mean, like not just from trolls on the internet saying, oh, you're gonna fucking die. Uh, blah, 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 kill yourself, blah, blah, blah. But from ac an actual terrorist organization, ISIS, who are sending her death threats. And it was just, the, the, the examples are too many. I mean, she received a photoshopped picture of a, um, a beheading victim, like ISIS and a beheading victim, but like her face on the, on the victim. And she also received like pictures of her apartment that she was living in at the time and people were saying we're gonna we're gonna kill you and just just a lot of threats and if she were to go to, back to lebanon she would definitely die um like definitely be killed so she can't even go back to her home country and her instagram got hacked by isis at one point as well and they were spreading all sorts of propaganda like isis was really coming for her um it, it's scary scary so this is like more than cyberbullying, i would say yeah her family stopped talking to her too um, many people were saying that she was not only shaming herself and her family but she was shaming her country um like people were like the one time a lebanese person is famous they're doing porn and that's bringing so much shame and stuff like that it was a lot to deal with and I'm sure it still is. And she has stated that she attends therapy on a regular basis to confront all of the trauma that her porn career has given her and the emotional distress and just all the cyberbullying and just, it's a lot that she had to deal with. It's not just, I know a lot of us are familiar with the Mia Khalifa song by I Love Friday. It's more than just that little TikTok song. Like it's some serious cyberbullying that this woman had to go through and continues to go through. So why, 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 why are we talking about this now? Why are we talking about justice for Mia Khalifa? Why is this spreading? Um, so the reason why is because with Bang Bros, with those 11 videos that she did, 11 or 12 videos that she did, she with Bang Bros specifically, because I'm pretty sure that she did her own content or like maybe camming or um, this other company, I'm forgetting the name. I think she did like a video or two with them. But with Bang, Bo Bang Bros specifically, she only made $12,000 total from the videos with no residuals. Now, Bang Bros came out with a claim saying that she made about $750,000 with them, but that amount factors in other things besides just the videos. And she works with them for being like, um, like a social media like director or something like that like she did other stuff with bang bros that factored into that seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars but it should be way more because like i said she only made that 12k was from that those videos that are still getting billions of views and billions of dollars with no residuals so she should definitely be getting residuals if you ask me so yeah if someone says i know a lot of people were saying oh 12k doesn't look like 750k but she has already said on her instagram that that factored in so many other stuff and she's not mad about all that other stuff that it factored in she's mad at that these 11 why does these 11 videos only equal twelve thousand dollars everything else i'm fine with La 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 la. But these should be getting more money because they they're still circulating. They're still giving you more money. Like they're where's my share? Where's my where are my residuals? So this TikTok actually sparked justice for Mia Khalifa, the online social campaign. You was at the club, bottoms up when I first met you, couldn't get enough. If you go to the petition that has a bunch of signatures um you will see the demands so basically their demand well we yeah we're demanding that the her domain names be returned to her if you look up miakhalifa.com it's still her porn site and she has no control to that so give her back her domain name so she can use it for whatever she wants to use it for she wants her all her videos with bang bros removed um especially since she's not making any money on them and we want this to be fairly discussed in court so that she does not take a big financial hit because 
essentially this is one person, Mia Khalifa, going against a big billionaire conglomerate that is Bang Bros. So it's very hard to sue someone with that type of, not someone, because not someone, a company with that type of entity, that type of, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to call it, like that type of power. So it, it, it's very hard. And she's tried, you know, she's asked multiple times for um, the removal of her videos and to get back her domain name. And she's given them financial offers, but to no avail. And she said that she'd pay for all of this, but um, Bang Bros actually told her that, you know, no, we won't take the videos down, but if you do more porn with us, then the new porn will give you some revenue. And it's just like, no, if she's asking for the videos to be taken down, why would she want to do more porn? But yeah, Mia has talked about this um, numerous times. Be sure to actually listen to her story from her mouth because there's obviously I'm telling someone else's story. So it's not going to be you're, you're losing a lot of the information coming from me instead of from her whole, own mouth. So I urge you to um, watch some of her videos where she talks about this. Um, and just do your own research because I think Mia Khalifa's story is very interesting and I think it sucks like what's happening to her. Also, this is just one example of someone being taken advantage of in porn and there's so many more examples. I also included a lot of cool links um, and articles to read that a lot of what I just said is sourced from those articles that I will link down below. Make sure you watch my other videos and like, comment, subscribe, and tell me what you think about this situation. I'm very curious. Bye.